Hello friends, welcome to another video on my YouTube channel and in today's video we will understand image classification using fast AI. So if you remember recently I uploaded a video series on image classification using TensorFlow and I have promised to develop a image classification model using fast AI on Intel image classification challenge data set. So this is the video you are waiting for. So let's get started. First, the code used in this video is available on my GitHub and the link for that repository is in the description of the video. And don't worry, I'm going to update the readme file. Let's first get our data set. So the data set we are going to use is Intel image classification challenge data set. And if you can see here, there are six classes and the data set is structured into segment prediction, segment test and segment train. And there are around 20.3 K files in the data set. Now let's see the notebook. So I have created a notebook as always. Let's first import the packages we need. Before we start the development, we need to create a virtual environment and install the required packages into the environment. So I have created my virtual environment and installed the required packages. I'll be updating a requirement .txt file here and you will find it on my GitHub repository. But mostly we are going to use uh, PyTorch, Fast AI and uh, Jupyter Notebook and IPy kernel as well. So let's import the required packages. Meanwhile, let's look into the data set. So the data set is in three subfolders, train, valid and test. Inside train and valid, there are six folders of each class. And in each folder, there is images of that particular class. So this is our data set. So in order to use this kind of data set where the images are segregated into their own class folder, for this kind of data set, we need to create a labels.csv file where the first column is name and that will be the path of the image and the second column will be the label of that image. So you can see here I have shown the structure of the data set and we need to create a labels.csv file and if you have noticed I already have created a CSV file where the first column is the path of the image and the second column is the label. I have created this function. This function creates labels.csv file in the train and valid folder or you can say in the folder where you provide the path. So let me first delete this. And there will be a. Yeah. So now let me run this. Now what I'm doing is that I'm providing the data set path. So the first path is under data set train and the second path is under data set valid. So let me run this. You can see it has created two files, one in train and one in valid and you, we can verify that. So the first column is the name of the image and the second column is the label. Now let's load the data set. So once we have created this labels uh, CSV file in valid and train folder, we can load this kind of data structure of the data set it is known as ImageNet data set. Now let's load the data set so that we can use it during the training process. So we will use image data loader class and there is a method called 
from folder so first let's see into the documentation so this is image data loaders and it has a method from folder now this path is a path to the data set train this is the folder name where you have training data set and this is the folder name where you have valid data set in case you don't have this separate train and valid data set what you can do is that you provide the absolute path to the training data set and then provide valid percentage here so that it will create a training and validation from the training data set so let's look into our data loader also we have used two things item transformers and batch transformers so for each item it will perform a resize and then for each batch it will first normalize and then use a random transformation so let's load our data set We will ignore this warning. Now let's visualize the data set through the image data loader. So image data loader can have two, three things. First, you can say it has train, then it has valid data set. So under valid data set, we can use a function called so batch so it will show the images from valid data set let me run this so you can see the images and the corresponding label now let's see the images from training data set as well so you can see here cc mountain building street forest so this looks nice now let's build a vision learner model again we will see the documentation so vision learner model takes data loaders and the architecture there is one important argument is matrix matrix will be a list so you can see here we have used accuracy and error rate also there are other important arguments but in this video we are not going to use them that is loss function and learning rate so now let's build our model so here i have used resnet 50 and we can look into here that we get so many different models here so i'm going to use resnet 50 let me run this cell now we will tune or you can say we will train the model on the data set so for that we are going to use fine tune method again let's look into the documentation there is a fine tune method so this fine tune method is uses a freeze which freezes the first epoch and then you know unfreeze the learner and you know run the rest of the epochs again let's run this you can see the training is started i'll resume the video once the training is finished now the training is finished and you can see we have got a pretty good accuracy and if you have seen my video series on image classification using tensorflow uh, I, I remember like it was around 0.65 or something with just one epoch and you can see here with just one epoch we got around 90.93 accuracy so now let's see the results so you can see that it shows the result in a way that if uh, the classification is wrong the color will be red let me see one more time if we get a red color yeah you see uh, here the classification is wrong so this way you can visualize the results as well now let's 
do a validation test on the validation data. You will find this is the loss, this is the accuracy and this is the error rate. So you can see we got around the same 0.93 accuracy as during the training. Now let's save the model. So in order to save the model, there is export method associated with the model we have created, which is the object of the learner class. Uh, so here you pro provide the name with the extension pkl and you don't have to provide the directory where the model will be saved. By default, the model will be saved inside the dataset directory so let me run this you can see pickle file is created now let's load that pickle file so fast ai vision has a method called load learner now when you load the pickle file or the model you will need to provide the explicit path to the model so now instead of just this file name i'll provide the data set and uh, file name as well so let me run this now you can see it will be uh, object of learner class it's not showing now but it will now there is also a predict method associated with vision learner model where you can provide a single image and get the prediction so let me run this as well. You can see it shows, you know, three things. First, the class name, uh, the number of the class and the probabilities. Now you can, you know, take this pickle file anywhere and create APIs using that. So I hope this video is informative to you. We have covered so many things, how to load data, then create a model and then train the model as well. In upcoming videos on my YouTube channel, we will create a model using PyTorch on the same Intel classification challenge data set. So watch this space for more such kind of videos. It takes great efforts to create this kind of material. So if you like my work, please consider subscribing to my channel and share this video as you can. Thank you for watching. Peace.